Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Trading Simplified. Dave Landry here. Wow, 10th show already. Time flies. So what are we going to talk about? Well, it's crypto week, so let's talk about crypto. I guess the first question is, is it real? And I think a more important question is, what's real? And we're going to dive into that a little bit. This My slides come from a presentation I did a couple of years ago on Bitcoin. So we'll try to get through as much of that as possible. But the main thing I want to get to is, should you actually trade it? And then we have the mother of all mystery chart reveals. In fact, I'm going to do that first to make sure we get to it. If you're looking for more information, including, and I'll probably mention several articles and links and such throughout today's presentation, you can find it at www.davelander.com slash stock charts. And what will happen is it'll put you in the queue and about an hour or two after I'm done with this show, you'll get the information. And then you can also reach me if you have to at davelander.com slash contact. All right, before we get into Bitcoin, and talking about crypto, I want to take a look at the mother of all mystery chart reveals. Last week, our mystery chart was KOD and the parameters from my trading service or down below. You had a buy at 29.40, a protective stop at 22.40. So that was a seven point risk. The pattern was a TKO. If you go back several shows, we talked about the TKO. In fact, I'm gonna show you quite a few TKOs today. And it triggered, it triggered last Friday and on Monday, bam, winning. It rallied over 200% in one day. Now, what I did personally was I watched it open and I saw it hit that initial profit target. So I had my order ready, but the stock continued to climb. This is a five minute chart, by the way. And I went to get out somewhere around 40 or so because I figured that I shouldn't look a gift horse in the mouth. And my order didn't go through, come to find out it was halted. So when it hit close to 50 and was trading again, obviously I put it in another order and then it got halted again. And then by the time I ended up getting out on the initial profit target, I got out about 55. And then I did sell some more shares later in the day in the mid 40s, just to lighten up a little bit the sell down to the sleeping level. Now, just real quick, I wanna show you in the spreadsheet what that looks like. In the spreadsheet, I track things mechanically. So we're looking for a 1% gain on the swing trade on the first part of the trade and hopefully much, much more on the second low. Now, as I said a second ago, I was able to get out just by luck, maybe uh, because of the halting of the stock. I tried to get out much lower, believe me. But by the time I ended up getting out of my first half, it was at 55. So if you look at that in the spreadsheet per 100K, that is 36.57 versus just $1,000. So it's 3.5, about three and a half times more than just the normal profit target. So the point I'm trying to make here is that a little discretion goes a long ways. And there's a lot more I could say about discretion, but I just want to introduce you to this concept. So when we talk about it down the road, I'll explain how much, how important using a little discretion is. All right, let's jump into Bitcoin. Is it real? Well, Bitcoin is just a bunch of zeros and ones. How can that be a currency? How could that be real? Well, before I answer that, let's talk about money. I have billions, no, trillions of dollars. In addition to trillions of dollars, I also have millions of francs, liras, rupees, dongs, dinars, and many other denominations. And this is a webcam shot from my old office. And behind me are all those currencies, or quite a few of them, I should say. I haven't put them up in the new office yet. I'm not sure where I'm going to put them and which ones I'm going to put up. My wife is encouraging me to be a little bit less cluttered in my new office. So we've got to figure out which ones to put up and only put up the best ones. Now, most of those notes that were behind me in that picture are pretty much worthless, except there are some that have collective value. In fact, one of them went up, I think, 55, I have to do the math on it, 55,000% or 5,500%. And I'll talk about that in just one second. 
So all of that money that's behind me is fiat money. And fiat means it's not backed by anything other than the government. And I use that term loosely. And if you look up fiat in Google, it says a formal authorization or a proposition uh, decree. And the Latin that it comes from is let it be done. So the government says, let this be our currency and we will back it, which in other words means it's backed by absolutely nothing. So fiat currencies have no intrinsic value. If you, like our dollar was backed by gold, I forget when the, we would up, took up, take it up the gold exchange uh, rate, uh, that was in the 70s, I think. And, but since then, we've, our currency is completely a fiat currency backed only by the government. So there's no intrinsic value. There's nothing backing it. It's only backed, and I'm making little air quotes, which I guess at the beginning of the year, we'll go on camera, you'll get to see my little air quotes. <laughs> It's only backed by the government, so to speak. Now, I had a picture of a, of a chap, which he actually came up in this search on his way to buy groceries in Zimbabwe. And it's right here. And I, when I was looking for this picture again this morning, I saw a lot of these people in Zimbabwe pushing around wheelbarrows full of money. And this was the original picture I was looking for here. This was a guy in, a, I think, a Wall Street Journal article on his way to buy some groceries. And I found it fascinating. I saw this woman with a basket on her head, I guess, going to buy some groceries too. But you could see a lot of these guys just trying to transact business in Zimbabwe, pushing around these wheelbarrows full of money. And you could see right here, this is a little entrepreneur here. He's got a wheelbarrow. <laughs> barrel <laughs> he's selling wheelbarrows which is pretty uh pretty smart the zimbabwe dollar has become so useless in south africa this is an actual sign i borrowed this concept or this idea from ian mccactivy he used to do a lot of presentations that were really he's no longer with us unfortunately but he did some really great presentations and a lot of great humor and a lot of interesting facts. And this was one of the slides that he used. And you'll notice that they don't want you putting cardboard down the toilet or cloth, diapers or newspapers. And they also don't want you putting Zim dollars, Zimbabwe dollars in the toilet because it'll clog in the toilet. So this currency is so useless, you can't even wipe your butt with it. Now here's a $100 trillion note. I bought probably about a dozen of these a while back. It was less than 20 bucks, probably about a dollar each. I got them on eBay. And I like to toss them out after dinner, you know, very expensive meal, I toss it out. Everyone, it's on me, you know, throw out a hundred million dollars. Oh, I'm sorry, a hundred trillion dollars. And a few of my friends and relatives asked me for them. And so I gave them out. And in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have because <laughs> these were, not only uncirculated, but in serial order. So they're probably worth quite a bit. If you tried to buy one, I, I got on eBay this morning, they're about 50 bucks and they've been kind of stabilized around that area. They're not worth 50 bucks in Zimbabwe. They're not worth anything in Zimbabwe, but the collectors over here are willing to pay up to 50 bucks or more for these dollars. And I've got a few of them still lying around. So that is one I will put back on my, my wall. Okay, pop quiz. What's the average lifespan of a fiat currency? I found this statistic shocking. The average lifespan of a fiat currency is 27 years. Now, Bitcoin has about another, I think, 10 or 15 years to go before we'll know whether or not it beats the average. But it's pretty amazing. Every fiat currency throughout history has failed on average of 27 years. And that's kind of a shocking thing. And I think our, um, I forget how old our currency is, I'll find out after the show. But if you're looking at, since our dollar turned fiat, we, we're not that far off of that figure. So the question is, it, is Bitcoin real? Again, it's just a bunch of little zeros and ones. Well, the story is in the blockchain. Now, these slides were from a few years ago. And I think blockchain's taken a little bit longer 
to come to fruition, but I think it's here to stay. And I think it's something that's pretty amazing. And I'm not, not going to read all this to you, but it's from the economists. And basically they said that the blockchain is a very important technology and it's going to change the way we all do business. So let me just give you a really oversimplification because Bitcoin is built upon the blockchain analogy. And you could probably get much more detailed analogy of blockchain on the internet. But this is just my view of it. The one record points to the next record and the next record points to the previous record. So the A record points to the B, the B points to A. And let's say you had, using this blockchain technology, you were tracking the maintenance on a car. Now, remember, with the blockchain, it's open for everyone to see all of these transactions. It's a public ledger, so to speak. So let's say you had some routine maintenance along the way, and you at one point the car flooded, you had it repaired, and then you went back to the routine maintenance. And all of these records, again, point to the previous record. Now, let's say you went to sell that car, and you tried to take out the fact that it was flooded, okay? When you patch that blockchain back up, it's not going to line up. You're going to have A, B, C, D, G, and G is going to be pointing to F, which no longer exists, and D is going to be pointing to E, which no longer exists. So the chain is broken, so to speak. It's very genius technology, if you think about it. Now, here's the thing about Bitcoin. Is there technically some value in Bitcoin, even though it is, it's not even a fiat currency, right? It's backed by the trust of everyone, which we'll get into in a few minutes. But it does take about $5,600 to mine one Bitcoin. So technically, you could argue that it takes that much money or it's worth that much money based on the electricity required. This is an older graphic, but this is another Google search and I Googled Bitcoin mining. And these are these computer mine, these fields of um, computers that they use to mine the Bitcoins. And it's all kind of fascinating. And what they're doing is they're looking at this open ledger with this blockchain and everything and they're verifying transactions. And the first person with the fastest computer to verify the transaction is able to generate a little bit of a Bitcoin. And again, it takes about $5,600 worth of electricity to generate one Bitcoin. And technically, Bitcoin is limited to, I think, 21 million, which I think is in the next slide. So technically, there's only so many out there. And then after that, it's going to be very incremental. And the cost of mining will get higher and higher. So basically, Blockchain is a circle of trust. And I like the way it was kind of presented. It's kind of like from the Fockers, excuse me. It's kind of like from the Fockers, you know, you're, you're in the circle of trust or you're out of the circle of trust. And if you think about it, if you're doing business with a lot of criminals, as a lot of these people probably are, if you could see what all the other criminals are doing and if they could see what you are doing, it's very hard for anyone or nearly impossible for anyone to cheat. And so it's all based on this circle of trust. And Alex, Alex Tapscott said that every single type of business can be turned on its head with this technology. And if you think about it, this blockchain type of thing can be used everywhere. Now let's get back to Bitcoin. Is it too legit to quit? A couple of years ago, when I put this slide up, the CME was getting ready to launch Bitcoin futures, and I was very impressed with this. Now, it's my understanding I had a, a tra well-known trader call me a while back and because she knew I was trading Bitcoin, but I explained to her I'm just trading it on the outright exchanges and not on the CME. And her problem was that it was kind of thin. So I'm not sure if it's liquid enough to actually trade. The reason I want to bring this up, though, is the exchanges are a little dubious when it comes to Bitcoin, but the CME, Chicago Merck, is actually a real exchange and they're trading obviously a derivative of the bitcoin so here's some fun facts there's 21 million maximum circulation that means if everybody in florida want one one and one they probably would have maybe just enough to go around 
if every other person in California wanted one, there'd be just enough to go around. Larry Hage could, uh, he's the Google dude as the staff over at Stock Charts told me because I, I didn't realize who he was, but the Google dude or the ex Google dude, he is worth about the entire circulation of Bitcoin and Bill Gates is worth about twice the circulation of Bitcoin. So if one of those two gentlemen wanted to buy up the entire supply, I know it's a hypothetical question, hypothetical statement, but what would the world be without hypothetical statements? And I think that's right with a W. But anyway, it's kind of an interesting fun fact. And $5 invested seven years ago, and this was as of 2017, I think Bitcoin was about, probably about where it is now, would be worth about $14 million. Now, the question is, should you just buy one and forget about it? Well, I don't think there's any good investments, but when Bitcoin was down in the threes or fours, not to give direct financial advice, but I was kind of thinking, well, if you're going to spend that kind of money playing golf or putting gas in your boat or whatever, then it might be okay to fritter away a little bit of money and buy one. Now, when the price goes to $20,000 as it did or near 20000 that might not make as much sense. But see it as... I think there's really no good investments. I actually did a, a long presentation just on this because every asset class at some point will lose at least half of its value at some point in your lifetime. But if you were going to fritter away that amount of money anyway, I think it'd be okay to buy one and forget about it. Now, these cryptocurrencies are not without the problems. The thing that makes them great, this blockchain thing, is also a potential problem. A while back, the Ethereum crashed. That's one of the cryptos, obviously. And I forget where it was trading at the time. It was like 300 or 150 or something, in the hundreds at least. And it crashed down to 13 cents. Now, these, this, was crash, this crash was, I think, limited to one exchange. But the problem is those transactions became part of the blockchain. So technically it did trade down to 13 cents. And the exchange came out and said, oh, you know, buyer beware, you're screwed. You, you put your stop order in, you clicked in and, and you're responsible. And then they later recanted and fixed some of those losses or gave the money back to some of these people. Now, there actually wasn't money to give back. So that's a bad way of putting it. They actually went in and reimburse these people in the stock market on a major exchange if you have a glitch or a tick or whatever they just unwind a trade and that can actually be done but with a blockchain that can't be done because that's part of the train so that's part of the way it works so it's again it's one of the great things about them that is also a problem or can be problematic if you are going to trade them, I would suggest that you stick mostly with the major ones. I currently trade Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum. I will kind of dabble a little bit in some of the other ones that are more liquid. But for now, I think sticking those t those three, you should be okay for trading purposes, okay? Meaning that you're going to get in and out of the trade. You might hold for months or longer, but you are treat them as a trading vehicle. The exchanges, and I'm making those air quotes again, I think were a bigger concern. I had a small amount of money. I still have a small amount of money in Kraken. And I remember one Friday it went down and the entire weekend, I did not know whether my money was safe, gone or whatever. So that's a, a bit of a bigger concern. And they were just doing some kind of software update. And there's been a lot of problems with some of these exchanges and these people have been very disingenuous, not the crack at people. That was an example of what can happen or what has happened. Anyway, one thing kind of interesting is your money can actually be seen on the exchange because if you go to trade it, they're able, they being everyone in the world can actually look in and see it. And that's a, a bit of a scary thing. And that's something that we could explore further at some point. So let's talk about trading Bitcoin. I went and I could only go back a few years. So I went back to 2017. That's probably when most of my trading started. And the way I see it is it's just another market. Notice we had a very, very, very nice uptrend as illustrated by the big blue arrow. 
and then we had a TKO looking type of pullback. Had an entry here. I had a stop down here, which gave me an initial profit target here. And if you go back in and watch the money management show, I go into a lot more detail on this. And here's the actual trade buy at 6580. And then here's the actual about a thousand points higher, thousand dollars higher, I should say. There's the actual initial profit target. So I just want to show you that I do actually trade Bitcoin on occasion. And once you get to the initial profit target, as you, if you watch the money management module, you'll know we bump our stop up to break even. And then hopefully, and I hate to use the word hope, but hopefully it just trail a stop higher to stay with the position for a long, long time. So looking back to this trade, here was our buy, our stop was down here, our initial profit target, again, $1,000 higher. Once you hit the initial profit target, you make sure your stop is all the way up to break even. You actually trail it a little bit ahead of that, as discussed in the money management program. And then you trail the stop higher. Now, in this particular case, I did an add-on trade. Sometimes you get a pullback and you could add on some coins, okay, or share, same thing with stocks. And then I was able to flip those out for a swing trade and then stopped out the remainder of the position with a trailing stop. Now, I was looking back to my 2000 trades, I'm sorry, 2019 trades, and we had what I call a first thrust off of lows. Now, it's just a one bar up off of lows, and I actually prefer more bars up, but I figured it was worth a shot because it was coming off of major lows. We had the pullback, which gave me an entry here, and a stop way down there. And the reason a stop is so far down, I just figured give it some room so that if it went all the way down to the stop, I know I'm completely wrong, and then project it upwards, there's our initial profit target and then stopped out of the remainder. So back in, I think it was March, we had a nice uptrend and then we had this little bar down. And Rachel, if you're there, ask, let's see if um, anybody can identify what that is. And what we'll do is we'll go to commercial and when we come back, we'll see if anybody can figure out what that is. And I'll give them uh, $200 for use at DaveLander.com. <laughs> okay. Rachel, has anybody figured out what that pattern is yet? No, they have not. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you what it is. And once they see the screen, they can write in if they want. It is a TKO, one of my favorite patterns, something that we've been talking about quite a bit. And I think it's kind of cool that these TKOs are shaping up nicely or often shape up nicely in the Bitcoin. And again, these are actual trades. We had an entry up here, stop down there. And then you can see it didn't do a whole lot for a while, but as long as the stop's not hit, as I preach, we'll stick with the position. And then if you do those calculations, initial profit target was up here. We trail a stop higher. We're up to break even plus once we hit that initial profit target. And in this particular case, it was a beautiful little setup once again. So I decided to add back on some shares. And unfortunately, that position or that part of the position failed miserably, but the remainder of the position, when you add it all up, worked out pretty nicely for what I call a much better than a poke in the eye type of trade. Now, what I would encourage you to do is learn about these things and then wait and wait and wait for setups and then earn. So learn, wait and earn. If you look at my trades in Bitcoin, you'll see that earlier this year, it was pretty hot. 
and I placed quite a few trades. That last one didn't work out, by the way. I don't, I don't want you to make you, I don't want it to look like every trade I talk about or do works because sometimes, obviously, I do have losses. But uh, lately, we've been doing really, really well on, uh, especially with the mystery charts. Anyway, so for ever since August, so August, September, October, November, it's been four or five months where there's been nothing to do as far as I'm concerned in trading uh, the Bitcoin. Now, I was talking with Zach, who is lead, uh, technolo lead of technology over there at Stock Charts. And one of my things that makes me feel great is when I'm on a project and then people on the project pull me aside and say, hey, Dave, I really like the way you're doing this. Can you explain it a little further? I think that's a cool thing. It makes me feel fantastic. And I'm pretty excited to be working with Zach. And one of the things we were talking about last week is hourly bow ties. So if you're looking to get more active, because like I just said, for five months, there really hasn't been anything to do. Take a look at like hourly bow ties. Now I would encourage you to only trade these coming off of major highs or major lows. So this is an hourly chart. And these bow tie moving averages are a 10 day simple, 20 day exponential, and 30 day exponential. So on an hourly chart, those would be obviously hourly bow ties. And notice we have a major low down here, and then we have the bow tie form, which would give you an entry here. Now, you'll notice that initially this trade failed miserably, but our stop was down here, giving it lots of room. And the reason we give it lots of room is when you're trading these emerging trend patterns like this, if it goes all the way back to the old lows, you know you're wrong. So your stop needs to be somewhere fairly close to those old lows to where if it got that far down, it would look like the trade is a failure. And you're absolutely wrong. Obviously, if you're a trend follower and it goes to new lows, you're wrong. But as long as it doesn't stop you out, you stick with the position. So initial profit target up here. And remember, this is an hourly chart. So you trail a stop higher. It gets stopped out for eh, a little bit better than the poke in the eye on the remainder of the trade. Now, to those with a good eye, you might notice that there's actually another setup here coming off of major highs. Notice that we have a bow tie down and your major highs are up here. So you could look to actually short these shares and ride it lower. Now, if we zoom in on the original trade, you'll see that again, the major low, a little bit more obvious. And there's the bow tie with an entry stop down here and then initial profit target up there. Okay, with Bitcoin, just remember that I think the blockchain is gonna be bigger than the Bitcoin. I would trade it just like any other market. The exchanges are a little dubious. I would use technical analysis and only technical analysis. All right, that's it for today. I wanna to thank everybody for watching. There's a, the screen if you need to find me, davelander.com slash stock charts. And thanks for watching. May the trend be with you.